Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. I want to talk about fasteners today. Um, nuts, bolts, screws, washers, lock washers, shake proof washers, nuts, castle nuts. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of different fasteners used on our cars in lots of different places. Um, starting off with the T-types and then through the A's and the B's, there's a gradual change in the type of fasteners that are used. So anyway, let's take a look at these. We've taken apart a lot of cars. We've taken apart 100 cars, probably more, in, the, in my 40 years of, of being in business. And we take the fasteners from, from those cars, and we shake them. We shake them in a big tumbler that we have, and then we send them off and get them zinc plated. Now here are two bolts as an example. They look to be about the same bolt. One's a little shorter than the other. But up top here, you'll see that the one on your left has got a circle in the middle, and the one on the right has three hash marks. Now these are both grade five bolts, but the one on your right is American manufacturer. The one on the left says Sparts across the top, which is a uh, manufacturer of fasteners in England. So this is not British thread. That's not what I mean to say here. It's a British ma manufacturer. Both of them have the same thread, 7 sixteenths UNF or 7 sixteenths SAE, American Fine. So we've got British manufacturer bolts and American manufactured bolts. If you're doing a really good restoration, this is what you want, for sure. If we take a look over here in my 5 16 come on in closer. So here's a, here's a British bolt here, because you can see that it's got the, the circle, and it's still got the three hash marks on the outside. See the one, two, three hash marks on the outside? That lets you know that it's a grade five because they're always grade two to start with and then each hash mark adds a grade to it. If we take a look at the end of this bolt, we'll see, well, it's chowed just a, just a bit, but basically it's, it's uh, it's a square end, but here we got a pointy end. This is a body bolt. Almost all body bolts are, are uh, um, of British manufacture. And this one says Linreed, L-I-N-R-E-A-D, at the top. This is also, uh, this is from, probably from an MGA. So those are the type of bolts we have. Now, of course, in, in the great sc scope of nuts and bolts, we've got, we've got uh, fine thread and, and coarse thread. You know, there's very little coarse thread on our cars. If we take a look at this, this is American manufacturer. It says Dorman on the top, large manufacturer of nuts and bolts with the automotive trade. This one has got a circle and three hash marks, so that's a British manufacturer. In the world of nuts, we've got all kinds of nuts. So here's some nuts here. Okay. This is a regular nut. It's a coarse thread. You can see it's r relatively coarse on the inside. Here we have what's called a nylock. And we have an, in, an inserted nylon um, cylinder in here that's then squished down. And it affords you a couple of pounds of torque so that when you tighten this up on the, on the bolt, theoretically it's not going to come loose because it's, it's, uh, it's got this extra torque built, built into it. If that's not good enough, 
Then we have Aerotite. Aerotite. These little uh, porcelain pieces jammed on the inside, that's from our, uh, our uh, shaker that uh, jiggles these things and gets them clean before they go off to get zinc plated. But these splits in the side here are called Aerotite. And uh, they're, they're designed, if you take, if you're going to reuse them, you take your hammer and tunk them inwards and down, and then when you go to tighten them up, they too put a little bit of extra torque when you're putting them on, two, three, four pounds, and uh, they're, theoretically they're not going to come loose. If you want to make absolutely certain that they don't come loose, then you use a castle nut and a split pin. Those don't come loose at all. Or a castle nut and lock wire. There are other there are other nuts that are not common to the MG. Here's one. Uh, American manufacturer incorporating some serrations on the on the washer that are part of the nut and uh, this is to prevent it from loosening. Let's take a look at lock washers. Well, I guess we're going to play 20, 52 pickup, huh? That was embarrassing. So here we've got lock washers. What I'm hoping to find here, here we have an American lock washer. I'm, I'm probably going to have to uh, put this thing down for a minute. So let me show you some lock washers. Here are these guys right here. This is called a shake proof washer or internal star washer. That, that's what we call them. Then we have American lock washers which have got a helix to them. You can see that, that uh, they're bent. So they got a helix to them. Some are relatively thick, some are relatively thin. You can see the, the difference here. But both of these have a rectangular cross section. In other words, they're wider on the annulus than they are on their height. This is a British lock washer which is made out of square stock. So that's, that's got a square cross section, whereas this has a rectangular cross section. And of course, if you're doing a T-type or something, you want to have the proper washers. I'm not sure who's going to get on their hands and knees and look, but you want to have the proper washers. Here we've got a box of screws. Oh my gosh, look at this stuff here. Here's a machine screw. Here's a self-tapping, self-tapping screw. Here's a screw that would hold a, a door hinge into place. It's got the point on it. And for as often as I call these Phillips, I think, I think the extra hash marks on top are an uh, in indicator that they're truly pause drive. So there's lots of different screws. We have our work cut out for us because all of these are unsorted. And we have lag bolts from Home Depot. We have weird bolts. That's a T-type. That, that looks like a T-type bolt just from the head. We have, uh, oh my gosh, all kinds, all kinds of bolts here that we have to figure out what they are, what they fit, and get them all, all organized by, uh, by their size. Here's a front suspension bolt from a T-type or MGA. Not from a B, I think it's too long. With a hole drilled in it for the, for the uh, castle nut. And of course it's got the circle on it, meaning that it's a British manufacturer. And it's got a name on it, but I can't read it because it was rusted away at some point. 
and it's been uh, anyway it's been cleaned up and plated. When you're doing a restoration, if you want it to look really nice, you want to get all the proper nuts and bolts in it, and you want to have them all plated. But there's a great danger in taking the whole car apart and getting a great big bag of nuts and bolts and getting them plated because you won't remember where they went. My gosh, there's a lot of nuts and bolts in the whole car. But if you do take the time to keep track or buy a parts manual so you know where all the nuts and bolts go, then what you end up with is a restoration like this MGA where all the bolts are, are correct. All the bolts are, are correct. All the, all the washers are the right size. And when you take a look across the, the, uh, the firewall here, you'll see that, that all these guys are, are, the correct, are the correct bolts. So if you're doing a really nice re restoration, that's what you want to do. Hey, we're coming into Thanksgiving. I hope Eli can be here next week. We'll have another exciting, uh, exciting time. But now I've got to... Uh, spend the next couple of minutes and pick up my mess. So until later, we'll see you later.